Can you tell I'm changing a little? No, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so fucking busted. Oh my god, ever since I did that one Dom audition, I did one audition where I had to be a Dom and it changed my entire personality. Oh my god, it changed my relationship to you. Holmes did one audition for like, what was it, a TV show where they were supposed to be like a dominatrix? And then all of a sudden, they're, I'm like, I'm like, can you go to dinner tonight? They're like, no, pig. You know, they're like, <laughs> they're, like they're like, we'll hang out when I say, how's that? I'm like, what has happened? Like, <laughs> no, can we pig. undo the audition? Shut the fuck up. No, it was way worse. I would like ask one girl out to dinner. I'd be like, guess I'm a top now. And he'd be like, no, you're being a citizen. Holmes <laughs> <laughs> be like, not my top era. And I'd be like, literally not your top era. <laughs> You're actually not a top. I know. That's been hard too. I, I've been trying to convince myself and then we get to the date and I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, you better order for us. <laughs> I'm like being a top in a way that like makes them bitch. do more work. Yeah, no. You're like, I'm a top. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> My, me being a top is being super sweet but calling everyone pigs. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Dude, so I was making out with a guy recently. Really hot guy, the one I showed you. Hey, Brag, really hot. Really hot guy. But I make out with a lot of hot guys. So don't just, don't make it seem like I only make out with one hot guy. He makes out with a lot of hot guys. I don't. Well, <laughs> you're trying to be a lesbian. And I'm trying to be a lesbian, and I make out with uh, some hot girls, but the numbers are still <laughs> doing their thing. <laughs> 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 I was making out with a hot guy and I kept make, stopping him to make jokes because I had this really funny bit, running bit that I was doing. I can't. And, and he, you like my tongue falls off? Uh, no, uh, not you. You wish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what if we were gay? Kidding. <laughs> no, I had this really funny running bit that I was doing, but I don't want to give it away because it's just for me and him, you know? Say and, it now. and I won't. And he goes, I and won't. Keeping it still. I'm keeping it secret for How us. How much I supposed to check in with them? It's our thing. Okay, go. You can check in with them anytime you want. And he goes, and like the fifth time I stopped to do the joke, he like he I'm like in the middle of doing the joke, and he goes, shut the fuck up. And then kiss me. And I said, Yeah, you're like, you're like, you're like said, no more jokes mm, tonight, sir. I said, yeah. mm. I, said, <laughs> I said, I need him medically, actually. <laughs> I, I said, well, I said, whoo. I've been wanting to shut the fuck up. Yeah, I know. That's the thing. It doesn't work when I do it. It sucks. If I had a huge fucking dick, I know. No, but it's fine. How much our relationship could change, the things I could do to you. If you had a huge dick? And sexy if, uh, things in a boy way. Let me tell you something. If you had a huge dick, our relationship would change zero. I wouldn't want... What about I, if my personality was a little different, too? Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, if you changed your personality, things would be way different between us. I might have to do some of that top stuff on you. No, can I just say what happened during the callback? Because it was actually a nightmare. So I did that role. I was really excited about it because it was just like the script was good. And then literally in the room, she goes, I do it. And I do the Dom scene. And I'm nervous, obviously. And then she goes, she's like, good. She's like, let's see a little bit more of a switch into the Dom. And in my head, I thought... I don't actually know if there is anywhere deeper I can go. Yeah. <laughs> but you're, I, like, you're like, speaking of strictly a bottom, I gave you everything I had. <laughs> I was like, I was like, 100%. I was thinking the same thing. You know, then I like get into it. It's like, she's like, all right, thanks so much for your time. I was like, I want to die. Thank you. We'll see you around. Yeah, I go right back and do a bottom. I'm like, thank you so much. Sorry. <laughs> Log off. <laughs> now, hey, just because we're now, I'm sure most people watching this know, but you're one of my best friends in the whole world. And just because you're one of my best friends doesn't mean I, I can I can slack off during this interview. I have to actually interview you. This means the world, actually. I mean, he never asks me questions. <laughs> in some days, it's just us, you know, me doing all the work friendship-wise. There has not been a single day where you've done work in our friendship. <laughs> I've known you for years. You have never showed up for me. I got the house first. That did kickstart us getting them. That did kickstart us getting We both bought houses in Kansas City. And you... And I've never said you that. You didn't kickstart it, but you did go first. I kickstarted that part. You kickstarted Casey. I kickstarted I was like... The houses are happening, and you were like, "Let's go!" And yeah. then now Caleb is like, "I'm buying a mansion." I'm like, "Wait, what's going on now?" <laughs> he's like, "He's like, he's like, there's a water park in Kansas City with my name on it." I'm like, "Holy shit, dude!" I've gotten, I love real estate. It's I, I want to displace I like it people. About you. I want to displace people. No, your love for real estate does turn me on. It's hot. I like when a guy you like think he's like on grinder or something. You look over, it's like houses. You're like, buy something. <laughs> like, <it's cute. laughs> Not you were saying that like it's a common. No, stop. We can't see. This is the problem. Okay, you and right, I go down right, these. Right, you right. and I go down these long little rabbit holes, and we can. But I have to actually ask you questions, and I want to tell people about you. That means the world. And really quick before I do that, just we kind of started so fast that I put my headphones on, and like they're on my hair. Do you think that looks weird? Like I should get the hair. Oh. John, I think you look great. John. Stop, John. <laughs> John's flirting with all my guests. It's really weird. John. Most of all, Jack Martin. John, <laughs> John, John flirted with Jack Martin a lot. Well, that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me one bit. I yeah. love Jack Martin too. John's wearing a La Brea shirt. <laughs> <laughs> John's wearing just an NBC shirt. I don't, I, I don't flirt with Jack, but I will say when Jack smiles at me, something happens. Of course. He's a hot guy. When hot yeah. guys smile at me, I feel things. I don't have that with guys who are like that, you know, like, 
perfect looking. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're, it does you're, something different to me. You're. <laughs> I'm, I'm like all of a sudden filing paperwork. I'm like, you need your glue stick and you have it, right? Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here's my interview so. for you. So, Holmes, now, if I'm not mistaken, you attended clown college. <laughs> You stu- didn't you study at a uh, no I think I've got this right yes you went to clown college get that away you don't need that okay get that away throw that away my notes <laughs> get those away <laughs> check those yeah you went to clown college I didn't go to clown college and no I didn't go to clown college let's set the record straight actually here because I've had enough this has happened multiple times Caleb and I have been out and I people have <laughs> confidently <laughs> confidently assumed that I went to clown college. They'll always be like, you went to clown college, right? And I'm like, no, I didn't. And I don't know who started it. And I don't know if it's just an energy I put off. Or... I, you know that I started it. I've been telling everyone for years that you went to clown college. But it started before you even said something. We were, we were in a circle in Kansas City and someone was like, you went to clown college, right? And you laughed really hard and then you started spreading it. Whose phone's ringing? Whose phone's ringing? It was Carly. Muted. I was on. Wait, call her back. Call her back. Call her back. Should I? Speaker. Into the mic. Our friend Carly Kane. She's going to say something fucking toxic. Brilliant New York comedian. She's sobbing. (laughs) Carly, you're on speaker and you are on So True, the podcast with me and Caleb. He made me call you back and here we are live. Don't say anything bad. Oh my God. This is so special. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Carly, it's Caleb Heron, comedian, actor, writer. Hi, it's so nice to finally meet you. I'm a big fan. I bet, girl. Hey, <laughs> what is something that's so true to you? Um, something that's so true to me is that I just ate an edible and tried to go to the gym and left after 20 minutes. And to me, and then I dropped a glass bottle of hot honey crisps in the grocery store for everyone. Okay. That's so true. <laughs> okay, and is that is that what you were calling Holmes about? Be honest. Um, no, I was just calling to check in. Oh, oh are they not doing okay? Literally, Car- Carly's dropping things, literally taking edibles at the gym, and is like, I'm worried about Holmes. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. What do you think you need to check in with Holmes about? Are they not doing well? I don't know. You know, it was hard to tell last time we talked. It was really quick. <laughs> yeah. We had a really quick check in where it was one of those ones where I was like just getting into something, and they're like, got a shower fast, love you. And I was well, like, Well, Holmes, how are you doing? Let Carly know. I think I'm doing really good today. <laughs> <laughs> Carly, I do have that friendship disease where we're like, really... yeah. What'd oh. you say, Carly? Do you How see are that? you doing? How am I doing? Well, thank oh, you for asking. Some people never do. <laughs> um, Carly, I'm doing really well. I think I've been craving love a lot lately, romantically, but I think <gasps> creatively I'm feeling inspired. Carly, this not, is classic. Not Carly producing the podcast. No, right this now. is what's so true about Carly. What's so true to Carly is switching it right onto you. Here's something that's so true about me, Carly. Here, I want I. The so true about me is that I need an answer from you on this question. I need you to be honest, okay? okay. Holmes and I are both drowning. You have okay. one life raft to Carly, throw out. Carly, for real, be honest. Be this. really honest. You this have is, one life raft <laughs> to throw out. The other person will die of drowning. Who are you saying, Carly? I'd kill myself. No, <laughs> no, you, no, you can't do that. You already love That's that idea. <laughs> yeah, Carly's like, wait, we're all. <laughs> well, who are you letting drown to be in the afterlife with? I'm not picking. That Carly, swapping it like that was really creative. Ask me, ask me what I would do between you and Holmes. Do it. What would you do? I'd kill myself. Oh my god. <laughs> when the when the life raft is on you, it's really hard. <laughs> the live raft, it's, it's difficult when it's on you. I wish I didn't have to give it out. Carly, we love you so much, girl. Oh, this is such an honor, you guys. Have a great rest of the pod. Carly, Wait. I'll call you later. Wait, do you want to, before you go, do you want to give one, um, do you want to give one really nice compliment to Holmes? Oh. Absolutely. Um, I think, Holmes, Picking you are so yourself in a way that is... <laughs> 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 Sucks. Oh, that sucks. <clears throat> <laughs> All right, love you, girl. Bye. Love you. You hung up on her. I did because it was time for her to go. Okay, well, I'm just gonna be like, she's gonna, she's literally on an edible, and you, and we just all laughed really hard at her answer. You know her. She's gonna get off them. She's like, she's gonna be like, I love a boy. I'm gonna get a text of all the things she loves about me for real. She's like, you're so yourself because you remind me of a little butterfly. You know what I mean? Like she is. I love you. Okay. Yeah, I get it. We're working on it. 
Well, that was obviously tough to hear. She yeah. workshop that here. Like that yeah. was obviously fucking tough. Yeah, you're gonna like, call What do you like about mom. Holmes? I'm like multi talented. Carly's oh. like Car Carly's Carly's like Carly's like I love that you stay true to your fucked up life. No matter <laughs> how much it's not working. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No matter how much it's not working for you, you keep being you. Yeah, she's like sometimes you put on an outfit that it makes us look it's gross, you yeah. know. But we go, oh, that's her. She's being yeah. her. Yeah, whatever. I also can't believe that I was like, do you think Holmes is doing okay? And she was like, I can't tell. She well, we have that kind of gross thing, which is like I'm trying to work on in friendships where you're kind of suddenly a competition of like who's having like a hard moment yeah. like where it happens on accident you know what I mean where it's just like no actually something was really exciting today and then they're like oh I've been doing bad and you're like well I'll, the day before was really bad for me Yeah, you know and it, we go back and forth and you can just tell kind of and so mm -hmm. we have to work on that yeah you guys should work you on that you don't do that no mm, no no you don't do I, I guess I'm struggling to think of what you're even you're you saying know like, what I'm saying like you know when someone's telling you like they haven't won achievement like they're like they're like yeah I actually like got in the writer's room and then the other person is just like oh it sucks I just like can't catch a break and they're like yeah but the writer's room everyone spits on me and you're yeah. like what <laughs> like it has to be then kind of bad like it's like I feel like Carly and I have a thing of like we want to make sure that the other person knows we still need them or something yeah it, there's a there I do, I do think there's an impulse to be like hey, I don't want you to feel like my life is going perfectly when you're having a bad moment. I also have hard times. I'm with you. The struggle is real. And in a more selfish way, like, no, I need you forever. Yeah. That's kind of where it comes from me. I think it's more like, don't ever think I'm doing fine without you. Oh, that's toxic. I know. Okay. I'm really toxic. I, I know. <laughs> I know. I'm I really know. toxic. I'm working on it. No, I think I'm working on it a lot. So we actually don't talk that much anymore. Ugh, God, I'm glad you got something new to work on because for a while you were doing boundaries and it made me like kill myself. <laughs> God, I got so sick of you setting boundaries with well, me. Well, you had to work on your boundaries. Caleb shows like up outside my house. It's, it's, it's like midnight. There's like a guy outside my house like banging on the door. I'm like, oh, fucking think I'm being attacked. Caleb's like, we're going to the movies. <laughs> it's like, that was your boundary issue. That's not a boundary issue. That's awesome. Do you like when someone shows up at your house unannounced? Yes. You do. Depending. If it were you, yes. I would never be mad at you showing up to my house unannounced. Who would you be mad at? Well, those people. <laughs> And John, John's like, <laughs> <laughs> not John, not John. There's people. No one in the room. No, I would never. No one in the room. I would never be mad at you showing up at my house unannounced. I. The thing I think that you and I struggle with is that I oh, love oh. you unconditionally, and you love me with conditions. <laughs> oh my fucking god! And that's hard because here's it's unbalanced. Why I'm on the and here's why I'm on the pod today. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. <laughs> No, I hate when you set boundaries with me. It's so annoying. I love you so unconditionally, and you know that. This is this is me. This is me and Holmes's relationship. Me. Hey, do you want to get lunch today? I'm really missing you. Haven't caught up with you in a bit. Just thought it might be nice to have lunch. You, four hours later. Hey, sorry. Absolutely can't do lunch today. Like, I have a crazy one. It's just nuts. I did have one meeting at 11 a.m., so the day's pretty much shot. I need to sit under a tree and kind of be in my body right now and check in with the universe. However, know that I love you so much, and it's not personal. Three days from now, I really could do a phone call. You know what? <laughs> That's our friendship. You know what? I actually was really a helpful conversation we had recently that helped me with this because I would give a response like that because I have so many bitches in my life that when I can't hang out, they like a response like that. That is like kind of like over explaining why. Yeah. And then we had the conversation the other day where you said women are more annoying, but men are more evil. Oh, should we, <laughs> oh, oh, should we have that on the record? Oh, should that be on the record that I said that? Because here's I said, I said, I said, you get me, I'll get you. Because here's what happened with that. That was really helpful because one of my, you are my most masculine friend, which. <laughs> I know can, that's fucking right, brother. Which can be so powerful because you are a gay man and I have a couple of straight guy friends who are super femme. Um, but. Need them, by the way. <laughs> need them. But it was really helpful when you explained how like, it's like nice if I just like, I can't. Yeah. And now that actually feels nicer with you. But I thought that was being ruder to be like, I can't. What I meant when I said that women are more annoying, but men are more. <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot of women fans. We can't just be selling me down the river like that. I think this is an interesting discussion because he did actually, you got me. I, I, I convinced you disagreed with me at first. I disagree. Here's what I meant by it. Men are more often ill-intentioned and have malice and are mean-spirited. Are like actually evil sometimes. Evil. And but I find it often when I when a when a man when a male friend tells me like I can't hang out, he'll just be like, I can't, maybe next time. That is much more comforting to me and less annoying. Yeah. Women often annoy me more, purple but it's hearts. because what's that? My purple hearts. Your purple hearts. I hate the purple hearts. Y women annoy me more often because I love them so much and expect them to be so fun and cool, but they're never evil. Like the women in my life are never doing something mean spirited or hateful. No. They're just annoying. Well, it's, but it's a way. <laughs> literally, literally, all of the 
yeah, it's like my mom. Definitely, definitely. It's like my mom. Like I love my, my mom is who do I love more in the world than my mom? Nobody. I love that bitch down bad. Would die for her. Not you especially. I love my mom more than you. Everybody in this room. I would trade all of you for one of my mom. Fine. Love that woman. <laughs> However, she's annoying. Like I texted her the other day that I was coming to Kansas City for a month. I said I'm gonna be in KC for a month at my house. She's currently staying at my house. Okay. She lives there. She said she's living at my house right now, and she said I hope we get to spend some time together. Oh, <laughs> no, that shut is, up! No, that is so We're weird. going to like I just that's annoying. Like you live at my house, but that's the thing. Like the more femme communication that was honestly helpful when you said that but so you're my only friend that's like that so many of my other friends would rather be like and I'm, I'm skipping from this meeting to that one otherwise I would of course run to you where it's like if I just say like can't with them they'll be like okay you fucking hate me and now when you said that I'm like no that actually helps and I do like that about you now I'm just like can you tell I'm changing a little no not yet <laughs> <laughs> I'm so fucking busted, dude. <sighs> it fucking sucks. My therapist is also now neurodivergent. Like, she has ADD, too. And I'm sort of like, she used to never... <laughs> she... Not now with this. My therapist is now neurodivergent. That was like a Bill Maher clip. Yeah, I get my therapist is neurodivergent. Here's the thing. I have ADD. I can't hide it. I was on set the other fucking day. Yeah, my, my therapist got ADD, a damn disappointment. <laughs> All I'm saying is she used to not talk about herself, and that was her main thing, and I liked that because I've had the therapist before who are like, you know what movie I loved watching this week? And I'm like, I don't fucking care, yeah. you know? And so she don't talk about herself, and I love that. Now she started to do this thing, and instead of just saying, like, you, she'll be like, we think like this because we're both. And I go oh, like, God. and now I'm thinking about her suddenly. Now I'm worried about her. Now I'm thinking, and so I don't know what's going to have to happen with that. It fucking sucked. I was on doing Sari Short the other day. There was this guy working on it. You were doing a short film for our friend Sari. I can blab. Yes. Genius. Love her. And there was a guy working on it. And then there was her roommate, who's this like really, really smart, cool, hot girl. Okay. Mm. And she <laughs> is hot. It's important. Yeah. And she is kind of being kind of quiet and she's like doing something in the corner. And this guy, she's talking about how she has ADD. And the guy's like, this one guy working, he's like, he's like, he's like, I could not tell. I could not tell you do. That's really interesting. And I was like, yeah, I have it too. And he was like, we all know. And I was just like, okay. He was like, oink, oink, ugly bitch. <laughs> yeah, focus up. He was like, you're insane. <laughs> <laughs> it was a nightmare. He was like, oh, the ugly girl talks. <laughs> yeah. She focused up enough to get a sentence out. <laughs> he's like, he's like, I'm thirsty. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I talked about it with the roommate later. She laughed. She noticed it, too. Yeah. She was like, yeah, he was treating me different. I was like, thanks for saying. Like Thank you for saying. <laughs> What's up, y'all? A few quick things from me. I'm going on tour. I'll be in New York, D.C., Philly, Chicago, Nashville, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Dallas, Houston, and Fort Worth in the coming weeks. So please go get tickets and come see me live. Uh, if you're enjoying the podcast, there is so much more of it exclusively on Patreon, including monthly bonus episodes from me and additional segments with every guest. So go check that out if you want more. So true. And finally, if you're enjoying the show, please tell your friends, subscribe everywhere, leave a five-star review and all that stuff. Okay. Love ya. Ciao. Okay. Yeah. Interview me. Okay. So you went to clown college and that was really powerful and <laughs> no, really brought you to where you are now. You were on Welcome to Flatch. I was on Welcome to Flash. You were on Welcome to Flash for two seasons. You worked with Paul Feig. Yes, love. And a bunch of other great people. Yes, love. Uh, how, how was the experience? What did you think of it? You know what? Now I really look at it in a really beautiful way. I learned so much. I was It was my second audition. I was the lead of a show, so I really had imposter syndrome at the beginning. And yeah. now it feels silly telling you this because I know you know this stuff, but I know we Stop have to. Me. Um, I think I really learned so much, and I loved it. I love Kelly so much who I play. She has a really special place in my heart. And when I was... She was queer, by the way. She's gay. Kelly's gay. Kelly's super gay. And that was like... I thought it was really cool to be like a gay person. She was gay. It's not written exactly like that, but people know she's gay. Yeah. They come up to me and say, like, on the tour with I just did with Mecky, like, people who come for, from Flatch, like, a lot of them are gay women. Yeah. And they'll be like, I love seeing her on TV. Or it's like a little girl. It will be like a dad and her 12-year-old daughter. She's like, I love Kelly. And she's like, I'm like, you're gay. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, I thought it was really, really amazing. And I also like loved working in North Carolina because now I'm learning from being on a few things in like other places, how like because you're not in LA or New York, you get so close because you're in kind of a different place. I love working outside of LA. It feels like camp. So yeah. it's like, I feel like I got to learn so much be with really, really talented actors. Some of my favorite, some of my favorite performers in the world. I was actually just before this with Kyle Seelig and um, Taylor Ortega. Mm -hmm. 
and I love them both, and I wouldn't have met them without the show. So, yeah, I love it so much, and I'm excited for other stuff now, too. The only thing I wish I could change is that I wish we could, like, swear, and I wish we could talk about more real things sometimes that you don't always get to see on yeah, like your character could be explicitly gay. That'd be cool. If she was explicitly gay, that could be cool. And also just like, yeah, it was based on one that like they're swearing every other word. The show This Country, which I think Daisy and Charlie are geniuses. And like, I do wish that we could do that more, but that's out of my control, you know? But yeah. I learned a lot. I love her. She's a gay icon. <clears throat> and you know, someday I'll probably make something where she's like 50 and she just is like out and gay. And she's like, finally, I get to be in charge and like burping and shit, you know? Oh, I love when gay people burp. Dude, she's a burper. That's the she's thing. A burper. I don't burp. So I had to really train to burp for Kelly. I got in trouble with my dad when I was little because I, I discovered that you can make yourself burp. And he got mad. He was like, you got to stop. I wouldn't quit burping. You, well, of course. It's so fun. I was the same way when I found out I could quit. <laughs> <laughs> I like didn't come off because I was like I was deciding if I shouldn't say it or not <laughs> you said did John say we shouldn't put that in no it's just queefing is really gross no it's not burping's gross burping this is how we rank these I really think queef is the least gross then fart then burp burp is my least favorite burp's nasty you can like always taste their like fucking morning and afternoon like you can smell it in the air I like to be like either poop vag or I don't want to know what you ate <clears throat> you think a queef is less gross than a burp yes I think it goes queef is the least gross then fart burp's the grossest I think a queef is inherently... is there another air thing I forgot sneeze and you can't help that do though. you count that well I guess you can't help the other ones sometimes I think the, the order of disgusting is first is queef <laughs> Oh, no way. Because it comes from the vi vagina. Queef is the least disgusting. You think? I'm I kidding. Know. I'm kidding. I love queef. What do you think? <laughs> I don't want to turn off all the people with vaginas. I already did. I already did women are more annoying and men are more evil. This whole episode, yeah. No, I love pussy. And I love all the sounds that How they many, do. Have you heard a lot of people queef? Oh, yeah. You had girlfriends growing up who were doing it. I heard queefs. You did it. You haven't heard one live. Oh, I know queefs. <laughs> people are queefing around me no, left and right. No, they weren't. They weren't. They call me Mr. Queef. They weren't. They call me Chief Queef. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was my nickname in junior college. It was a mistake, though, telling, like, the Chicago Improv scene that that was a thing, because we'd be at, like, parties, and then everyone would be like, Holmes can queef, Holmes can queef, go! And there's, like, suddenly there's, like, an audience at 30, and I'm like, you guys, ultimately, like, I'm 23, and, like, I do want to, like, find love again. You were queefing at parties in Chicago? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm just going to say, we were close in Chicago, and you never queefed at a party that we were We got at. close my second half. My first half, I was, you like... You quit queefing at parties by then? I did. I had to talk with the person who was mostly infiltrating like the beginning and I was like, Hey, I don't feel like I'll queef for you still, but like I don't want to queef. For you. <laughs> that was basically it. I was like, I was like, I have fun when we do it, just us. There's so many things that are like so gay coded. Like it was always like me and one girl being silly together, and then she'd be like, Do it for the group, and I'd be like, I loved when we were like together kind of being silly, <laughs> us two. <laughs> You're like, I thought we were dating. <laughs> they're like, they're like, do your party trick, freak. <laughs> Literally, she's like, She went to clown school. I'm like, I didn't. <laughs> Like, I kind of thought we were going to date. She's like, I got a husband, queef. Yeah. <laughs> she mostly learned to queef at clown school. <laughs> she took queef in college. She took queef in college at clown school. I didn't school. learn anything in school. I probably would have probably learned more in clown school. You probably would have. Literally, I would have been able to like fly or something. It's fucking a nightmare. Yeah. Well, in the trapeze. That famous thing that clowns do. <laughs> I don't know. When, you, when I say clown, what do you think of action-wise right away? Juggle. Oh, you action-wise? Yeah. Uh, scarfs out of a sleeve. You do. I thought you were gonna say attribute wise. Yeah, I know. You're like you're like a loser goof. <laughs> well, I was gonna say like failed LA actor. <laughs> <laughs> Not the, <laughs> the chuckle from one clown in the back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking dead. My boy, no, I respect a lot of clowns. Natalie Palomides is one of the funniest people I've ever seen perform. She, and she's clowning. LA changed the clown scene for what I thought clown meant. Because before yeah. I didn't think this one, but I this one I this one's not bad. I am a fan of this one actually. If I'm having a bad well, day, it just and never someone, stops. If someone keeps doing that, like that will eventually get me gigging. Yeah, yeah. but gig ju but juggling, I don't. Every fucking streak I know how to juggle. It's like we get it. You have time alone where you're bored. John, you know how to juggle? Not even close. Yeah. Give him three balls and zero. <laughs> he's like, he's like, he's like, he's like, don't have the time. It's like you know how to juggle. Bitch. Give him three bottles and see what happens. <laughs> the way you said that, like it was like a derogatory thing for straight people. I think it is. Like the like, amount of guys, the amount of straight guys who are like juggling for me, and I'm just like, ooh, like this is never gonna come up. 
I've seen so many straight guys juggle. I, say, I swear to God. I hang out with a lot of straight guys, and I only know one of them that juggles. And I will never be over me saying, John, can you juggle? John saying no, and you saying kind of quietly as if you were saying a slur. <laughs> Give him three bottles and see what happens. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. Give him three bottles and see what happens. Maybe it's like a flirty kind of thing that's happening to me. They all they all think I went to clown school. They, they, they were on our first date. They're like, look. <laughs> so it's a nightmare. Oh, you don't think... What, sorry, I've got something in my eye. You don't think the straight guys are flirting with you? you no, Caleb, I don't know. They, I think some of them do. Straight guys do flirt with me. Obviously, Juan was. He juggled. <laughs> 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 who was he? What? Say the guy who he juggled. Uh, Chance. Brian McElhaney. He's a TV writer that I did, worked on a show with. He, did he juggle in the room? No, he did not juggle in the room. Okay, good. He's a great guy, and he's a very talented juggler. <laughs> I love him to death. Him and him and my friend Nick, they're a comedy duo called Britannic. Oh, amazing. Yeah, they're very funny. And they mostly juggle. No. They do other stuff. Okay. No, no, they do sketch and Brian at, juggles. When I was at, I don't know what it is about the skill. When I was at Fringe Fest, this one guy, he started juggling, and I was like, oh, cool, cool, cool. And then I sat there for like seven more minutes, I was like, the whole show's juggling. The whole show is juggling. Was and, it? Yes. And he Did was you do- stay? Of course. <laughs> it's me. I'm like, sad at the end, I'm like, yeah, we're amazing juggler. <laughs> you know what I mean? But in my head, I was like, God damn, like, this does get old. Did you want to sleep with him? Like, were you attracted to him at all during the juggling? I wasn't going to say that, but yeah, I mean, a teeny bit towards the end. Like, it does work because it's like, you do, like, straight guys are so bad at sex that, like, when they do something crazy with their hands or something, you're a little bit like, maybe that helped. Or, like, I don't know. Like, it's like, when they're throwing stuff up, it's like, well, if you can handle that, but, you know, they probably focus mostly on juggling and not, like, <laughs> <laughs> not, like, reading books about stuff. That is so fucking funny. I know. Wait, I have a surprise for you. We have some voicemails from our listeners for Wait, you. Wait, oh, I love talking <clears throat> to you, but I want to talk to them, too. We've Let's got go. plenty of time for you and me to talk. Uh, basically, I asked them, what's something you want to know the truth about? And we've got okay. two of them for you. Okay, so I'm a little confused because, like, you hear about pheromones and how, like, it would be, like, matched, like, DNA-wise, like, where you're weak and they're strong and blah, blah, blah. But then, like, supposedly if you're on birth control, your pheromones, like, react, like, the opposite way. So, like, it – and – ooh. Oh. <laughs> Caleb, I wish I had not left this. Pretend like you never heard it. Goodbye. I'm so high right now. <laughs> I would, let me tell you something about this caller. I don't know their pronouns. I would kill for them. She literally, she calls, she goes, she goes, she goes, I don't know if I should stop my birth control. Oh. Above, go no. Holmes, <laughs> Holmes said, I do know their pronouns. She, her. <laughs> I mean, no, I, I would kill for her. I literally, that's my fucking girlina right there. That was such a, there's such good energy in that psychosis. And someone who calls in high for something, I'm yeah. obsessed. Yeah. Because Laura knows when I'm high, I like can't call my best friend even. I'm always like, sorry, I'm being weird right now. <laughs> so, also, you can tell she came in, she, the pheromones thing, she thought she was eating. She was like, oh, this is a good question. I'm about to serve. Right, right, right. And, and then, then it, just immediately fell through. So tell me what you <laughs> heard question wise. She goes, she goes, well, the thing about pheromones is like they're supposed to be like when you're, when they're weak and you're strong or when you're on birth control, yours get stronger. So I want to know, ooh, <laughs> ooh, I wish I hadn't left this. Pretend you never heard it. I am so high. Bye. I That's do, the question. I do like the ooh. Okay. So she's kind of being like, is that real? I think she wants to know about pheromones and I think they're not real. Pheromones are like, oh, you sweat, and for some reason, instead of stinky, I want to fuck you. I think that's the idea, yeah. I have that with you. <laughs> don't you be... always find a way to make it. <laughs> no. Look, be sweet about it. Be... Fine, I don't have it for you. I don't think they're real. I don't think the pheromones are something you pick up on. I think they're real, but... Actually, I think they are real. No, you go ahead, because I think, I, think, I think this actually explains a lot about some guys I haven't liked. This is... This is why they're real. The people who I have dated are so vastly different. Two things they have in common, I do like when you like me. That's huge. <laughs> sure. <Okay? laughs> it's opposite, unfortunately. I hate that about myself. That's a nightmare as well. But the other thing is that it was just an energy. Like, it was just an energy or a smell or something, because they're, like, really different. I will say, there have been a couple of guys I have seen that they didn't smell bad. Like, I knew they were clean people, but their smell Ew. didn't work for me. <sighs> Do you know I, what I mean? Yes. I'm not talking about like the smell of their their like crotch either. I'm Ooh. not talking about like their balls or their dick or anything. I'm talking about like their scent. Like when we hug, I'm like, I know this. You're not dirty. I have this with women's breath, with like specific women who I'm like, I would want to hook up with you All in their breath. breath. No, I love some women's breath. I could fucking drink it, right? No, <laughs> right. I'm saying, there's, right, no, there's right some, to me, <laughs> right. 
I'm like, I could fucking to, drink it, right? I, was, I want us to be in the same sexual pool so bad. I know you do. It's just so we can have fun with it. I just wish there was some crossover. But there is some crossover. Like bisexual like guys. Like I want to fuck guys. Yeah. Who are gay. That's yeah. the issue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it sucks so bad how much it I'm into gay men. It's the only kind of porn that I've ever been able to watch. Okay. Oh. But, but I don't mostly watch any. Okay. But, <laughs> the, but. <laughs> Yeah, there's some women's breath who I'm like, I'm into you, and your breath is not bad, but the smell of it, yeah. I'm able to be like, no, I wouldn't want to kiss. And conversely, there are some guys that I've seen that they don't smell, they smell good. Like, I, I know that they're clean and they're wearing clothes and stuff, but there's something extra about, yeah, I think I just literally realized that I believe in pheromones. Do you believe in them? I think I, I believe be in pheromones. I believe in them 1,000%. Also, crazy to be debating this like it's not scientific fact. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure, yeah, 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 I'm pretty yeah, yeah, sure yeah. they've proven this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, I'm like Joe Rogan. But opposite, I'm like, I think I actually do believe in science. <laughs> <laughs> like gay Rogan. I'm like, wait. I mean, there is some science stuff that I don't believe in. It's fucked up. Name them. I think HPV is a little bit of a scam. <laughs> I think the doctors <laughs> I think the doctors are like oh every woman gets a strand and it's just like another thing that makes women scared to have sex because it's such a riddle like they'll be like guys can't be tested on them oh you have one of the hundreds of strands but that one's not cancerous that one is oh wait now it washed out and it's like what the fuck is this I want to tell you from the bottom of my heart that I, I need you to believe in HPV <laughs> I, I think HPV it. is very real well someone who doesn't believe in it isn't very convincing no Oh, I had it and it washed out. How about that? Okay. <laughs> Did a medical doctor tell you that your it HPV wa washed out? Literally. They say, they go, they go like this. They go, it, I don't know if they say wash out. They go. They Can just, somebody Google, is HPV wash outable? It, it's a huge thing. That's why they don't even like to give your pap smears until 30, a lot of doctors, because in your 20s and stuff like that, there'll be like a lot of people have it and it washes out. Swear to God. And it does It sounds like a scam. Now you know what I felt. <laughs> You're feeling what I felt. Well, Allie, what do we have? Allie probably is about to have hers washed out any day now. <laughs> There's currently no cure for an existing HPV infection, but for most people, it would be cleared by their own immune system, and there are treatments available for sy huh. symptoms that can cause. Sounds like a body your washout. Your body fights it off. That's your body fights it off. It's no, like a pussy flu. Washed. It's like a pussy flu, and they're like, never have sex with a guy again. <laughs> everyone has a pussy flu, and everyone's freaking out and making women never want to fuck. If you're, what if, what if queefing is just pussy flu? Yeah, yeah, I and gave it to sneezing, everyone. And you're sneezing. Dude, I was pussy fluing all over it. Dude, that sucks. Pussy Ew. sneezing. No, I wasn't. I okay. didn't have it then. No worries. I think, <laughs> I think HPV is real, and you should stop calling it washed out, because what that sounded like to me is that you literally just, like, lost it in the bath. <laughs> like, washed out sounded to me like it was, like, showered it away. But it's like, no, you had HPV. It just leaves your system. And guys can't track it. That is, uh, come on. <laughs> That's Wait, crazy. I'm they're sorry. Like, they're like, we can't test it in the boys, so they're going to keep fucking like raw dogging and stuff, but like you guys should wash it out at home. If what you're hoping for is that I'm going to side with you, Not a person on a HPV. podcast, versus like medical doctors. Some of the girls are believing in me doctor-wise. Some of the what? Some of the female doctors, because I, anytime I go in now, I bring this up kind of, and I'm always like, HPV is a scam. And like, I've had a couple <laughs> doctors who are like, it is kind of weird. You're, okay, sorry, just so I understand. You're trying to tell me you've been going to doctors- no. And pitching them on HPV not being real. Yes. And some of them are going for it. Yes. Yes. That's crazy. Doctors are, you know this. They can be anyone. And you know some of them are crazy. I told you when I asked, you've heard me talk about when the gay guy doctor, who I felt so safe finally because we were having fun. I was like, can you actually get pregnant from pulling out? And he said no. And he was like, no, we just don't trust guys. And I was like, well, that's insane. You can get pregnant from pulling out. If they don't pull out. It's like if the guy's like, we're pulling out. Oh, it felt really good. You know, that's like the thing. So there's two things I don't believe the doctors say. Everything else, I believe. I do. Everything. Everything? No, I think they're fucked on weight as well. So there's three things. I think there's three things that they're fucked on. I think they're good on weight. <laughs> so what do you think? I love the way doctors think about fat people. <laughs> Those are the three things I think they're fucked on. Weight, HPV. <laughs> <laughs> you you trying to shoehorn your agenda in, what and they won't thing? tell you that queefing is healthy. <laughs> Those are my three things. Don't it's shake. like your thing as well. Don't shake. No, well, I told you the one time when I don't know if I said it one time in Chicago when I went in, and she was like, "Do you smoke weed?" And I was like, "Yeah," and she was like, "That's illegal." And I was like, <laughs> I was like, uh, I'm, I was like, am I under arrest or are you about to fucking touch my boobs in a second? Like, what the fuck's going you never on? Should, you're always, if someone asks if you smoke weed in a state where it's not legal, you're always supposed to say back, are you a narc? 
Yeah, well, now I know. Now I lie. Now now I smoke weed every day. They're like, do you smoke weed? I'm like, no way. Never. So they're, they're like, they're like, oh, good, because it would really affect this test. You know what I mean? Like, it's like the worst. You need to be telling the truth about that stuff. I'm not going to. I you live, trust, in, you I live in two doctors. states where it's legal. Kath told me my mom to trust no one, and I finally start to get that. You're, I love your mom, but we need to take some things with a grain of salt. Growing up, I didn't believe her. Now I do. <laughs> <laughs> do you trust people? How many people? I trust people. How many? Oh, what do you mean, how many? Do you trust me? Do I trust you? On like certain things, I think there are things I definitely trust you about. But do I trust you inherently, I implicitly? Trust no. <laughs> I trust you <laughs> to tell the truth. I don't trust your judgment. <laughs> that was real. That was, that really was real. real. That was that real. That was real. I trust you in that way too. You trust my judgment? I trust your judgment 95%. Remember? Oh my I used God. to trust 100 and that was actually, that's a strength on me. It's like sometimes it's like I'll trust my close friend's judgment more than mine. And that's been something I've worked I'd on. love to get you back to 100. No. <laughs> 95 is a really healthy place <laughs> Holmes, I have for you a really exciting game. Okay. Okay? Let me tell you something. I am going to read you. Doesn't your hair looks your good. Your hair looks good. Okay. Does it actually? I love your hair. I like, but I like when guys have longer hair. You you're, you're like, but I like when guys look like shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, messy works for me. Good. Go. Hey, I got a segment for you. Okay. I'm excited. I am going to read you 15 statements. Okay? Okay. You are going to tell me, and there is a right or wrong answer. You're going to tell me as quick as you can if you think they are true or false. And if you get more than 10 of these correct, 10 or more, I'm going to give you 50 US dollars. <laughs> I need that. I know you do, baby. Here okay. we go. Are you ready? Sharks or mammals? What? Sharks oh, or, or mammals. I thought you said or. I was like. Sharks or mammals? Um... True. False. They're fish. The first. <laughs> oh my god! I'm already really bad at this. The first iPhone without a home button was the iPhone X. False. True. Greenland is the largest island in the world. True. True. The average human sneeze can be clocked at 100 miles per hour. True. True. The Chicago Magic Lounge is located at 2020 North Clark Street. <laughs> um, True. False. 50-50 North Clark Street. Uh, <laughs> Chance, Chance kind of was mean to you on that one. The I most common blood type is A positive. Um, true. False. O negative. I don't know any of this. It okay. took eight years to produce. It took eight years to produce the Disney animated classic Sleeping Beauty. True. True. Cheesecake comes from Italy. False. False. Greece. Only two men signed the Declaration of Independence on July 4th, 1776. True. True. Breaking Bad ran for seven seasons. True. False. Five. Florida State is the oldest university in Florida. I should know that. Um, true. You sure? No. True. <laughs> that one doesn't count. The Chicago Marathon is the largest <laughs> in the world. Chicago Marathon is the largest in the world. False. False. New York Marathon. Three strikes in a row in bowling is called a chicken. No. False. Turkey. False. Turkey. I knew that. Thomas Jefferson brought mac and cheese <laughs> to the United States. False. True. Ew. The, what the, the Hallmark greeting card company was founded in Kansas City. True. True. How many did they get? Eight. Boo, you suck. Wait. You'll never work again. Wait, eight fucking sucks. I was so close. The mac and cheese one, I feel like that's not true. Did you count the one I said about Florida? I did. Wow. Wow. So you really only got seven. Okay, fine. Has, any, has anyone got it? All ten? Oh, a lot of people. No, they haven't. Oh, yeah, a lot of people. A lot of people are getting 11 and 12. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> a couple people have gotten, uh, it, yeah. I'm trying to think if I have any shame about the ones I didn't know. I feel like towards the t the only one I feel shame about is the shark one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the shark one I'm feeling bad about. Like, it's like I should have known that's a fish. I don't think you need to have any shame around it at no, all. Oh, I'm going to. But, oh, I'll be processing <laughs> shame. But that's the only one I have it about. Tell your favorite story about us. About you and me? Yeah. Tell your favorite us story. There's a lot to choose from. A lot of lore. Well, it's it's kind of hard because a lot of them are kind of only earnest. That's okay. That's okay. The listeners like that. Do they? They like a balance. My listener, my fans like about me, and there's many of them. The K celebrities and K lesbians, they're a very <laughs> I no, cannot. I'm being serious. They're a very special community, and yeah, and they that sounded um, bad. hush hush. They um, <laughs> they val I think what they value about me is my my willingness to be both one of the deepest, most profound intellectuals uh, of our time. False, but also true. Oh, sorry, I didn't know. but also with true, they love that. But also mixed with a lightness and a silliness that most people as smart as me can't access. 
Okay, so I love that we're storytelling right now, kind of doing fantasies. No, <laughs> I think that my favorite was honestly what I think about. I think about two things right away. One is something that I love about you, which is that now sometimes you do drink occasionally. Which hear me out. I just will never forget the first time I saw it and you started trust falling on everyone. I think about that all the time. <laughs> It's one of my favorite memories of Just You Solo because I was like, I love him more than anything because people were really shocked because they didn't know it was coming. Um, but now... It's a lot of trust. I love it. My favorite memory that we share is when we had your mom and some of our chosen family and then my family and then Lady J and Deirdre and we all went out to Italian restaurant. It was before either of us had moved to Kansas City actually, but we were bringing people that we loved there to show them and we had like, <clears throat> I don't know when you go out to eat, I feel like so often like the table just isn't it. We're like, the table in the restaurant helped survive so much and we had this big square table and like, it was like the upstairs of the restaurant was just ours and it was like, such an amazing restaurant that I love so much. And we got to really look at everyone and laugh and tell stories about growing up. And I just feel like, I don't know, it was like honestly probably one of my favorite meals I've ever had. And then me and Caleb had like a moment, like we were like dating or something, but where we like went to the bathroom and we were like, we're going to split this, you know? And it was like this cute, I just, I just remembered feeling like not only can we take care of our parents sometimes, we can like show them a great time and introduce them to really, really interesting people. And we create community together. I wish I remembered this. <laughs> no, that was a very special night. I love that night. Uh, but of course, in true me fashion, the thing I remember most about that night is our server going deep on his sobriety. <laughs> Do you remember that? In yeah. the middle, we're having like this very special meal I with like some of our closest creative collaborators, our families. It is beautiful because it's going to be an expensive meal and we're planning on paying for it, right? It's like yeah. we were feeling very accomplished. And yeah. then our, our server out of nowhere at one point goes, yeah, I got my 15-year chip. <laughs> Drinking ruined my life. I was at rock bottom. My wife left me. My kids couldn't stand me. But every day, it's a new choice. More Wait. tea? More tea? Wait. I was I... like, Jesus, brother. I mean, I was proud of him, but I was like, it's maybe not the time. I forgot about that. Now I remember because I remember Lady J was like, 1,000%. I almost killed someone. And we're like, Lady J. <laughs> <laughs> we were like, stop. Stop bonding to your sobriety. Yeah, no. he went deep on sobriety that night. I don't know. That was my. What's your favorite memory of us? Say now. My favorite memory of us hasn't happened yet, and it'll be the day we finally de disentangle. Yeah, yeah, detach. No, say it now for real. <laughs> you my, don't. You don't have one. My favorite. You don't have Sucks. One. My favorite memory of us. There have been so many. I would say, um, to pick one is hard. That's what I'm saying. To pick one is hard. That but you know. You, you know trip. what? I'll pick one. Okay. So. Uh, We've traveled together a lot. Yes, which I love. Mostly good. And um, <laughs> <laughs> all good. And uh, when we went to the year that my dad died, uh, we went to Berlin together for New Year's with a bunch of friends. Yeah. And, and Ali, I wasn't Ali supposed was there. To go. Shout out, Ali. Love you, girl. Well, and it was fun because I wasn't supposed to go to Berlin. I was just in Europe and like you were like coming. So I was like, I'm I going. wasn't supposed to go to Berlin. What happened was that our friend Nori and I were like, let's go to Paris for Christmas. Mm -hmm. And um, I was already in Portugal. And you were in Portugal and Lady J was going to be in Berlin. And yeah. we were like, we've heard New Year's in Berlin is crazy. Why don't we all go to Berlin? And then Ali decided to come. Crazy it was. And, and crazy it was. <laughs> And I decided to come, and it was a whole thing. And we, uh, the night of New Year's Eve, you remember, we didn't have a dinner reservation. So mm -hmm. I found a place near where we were going. That was so fun. And it was it was this Greek restaurant, which was so random. And there was this, like, I think, like, brother-sister duo, maybe? It was, These like, a young girl, yeah. Who, like, uh, clearly, like, booked this gig. And yeah. they were playing the restaurant, and they were playing, like... Bad covers. They were playing bad covers. But in a way that really was camp. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, I hurt myself <laughs> yes. today. <laughs> the needle tears. Come on, a hole. <laughs> And it was and, crazy. And their parents were there and us. And, and we everybody was taking pictures them. of them because it was like yeah. all their friends and family who came yeah. out. And we we were cracked. We could not have had a better time. We started dancing. It was so fun. And then we, we went to that mountain meal. top. We love a good meal. We love a good meal. A good meal out is my favorite activity. And then I took a video of you smiling beneath the fireworks at the strike of midnight. Right before I got struck. Right before you got struck by a firework. Yep. <laughs> we were getting struck a lot that we night. We all got hit by fireworks that night. You were just the most dramatic about it. You were the second <laughs> most dramatic about it. <laughs> Not. You were the would second you, most dramatic about it. Would you tell anyone to go to Berlin for New Year's or would you say don't? I would say go. I'd say go once. I'd say go. I'd say the fireworks were awesome. It was cool that they shoot them at you. I thought that was cool. I'd say I'd say go once and like wear protective layers. But again, I'm really at a place with death where I'm like. You'd be okay. I, I just want to go in a cool way. 
That's I feel, all I want from I feel my so dad. similar. I would like it to be like animal or something. Like I don't want it to be just bed. Yeah, I want to die in an awesome way. The only two things I think about my death. What are do you this. consider awesome? Like hot air balloon? Like, some, like getting killed by a firework in Berlin on New Year's Eve. Hello, he lived a life. I think that would be awesome. The only other thing I want from my death is I want to be the most famous person who dies in my death event. Or on the day I die, maybe. Oh, oh I don't want to be I don't want to die with like S- I don't Jake Gyllenhaal or something. Literally. And I do also don't want to die. Uh, That's why dying by gun in America fucking sucks. It does. And I also don't want to die near a hero. I don't want to die by like a school teacher who jumped on a grenade. Like, I, I don't want because then it's like school teacher jumps on a grenade and comedian dies alongside, you know? I hundred percent get that. If I die by gun, I want it to be in Europe. And people are like, whoa, that never happens, yeah, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, holy shit. I want to die in a knife attack in Japan or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want to die by knife out. I know that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so just remember that. I, yeah, I just want to die exciting. I'm not, I'm not really, it's, I'm like having a good time being alive, but I'm not like, I'm not like desperate to keep it going, you know? You are. No, I like it. I like it. But I'm like, I, I think I used to have such a fear of death and my hypochondria was debilitating because of that. And I've really made peace with death where I'm right. like, it is going to happen. Right. It's so when to. now when the plane gets bumpy, I don't freak out. I just go, would be funny. Do you think that switched after your dad died? No, it was before. It was oh. COVID. It was COVID. You were, re- I remember at the beginning, you were really anxious. Yeah, COVID fucked me up. And then, but I'm lucky it fucked me up in the way where it kind of fixed me. Right. COVID took a lot of my friends in the other way. It kind of fixed. I don't think that it, I mean, I didn't have a good time, but I don't think, I think I would have been just as messy either way. Without, with or without COVID? I do. COVID was good for me. <laughs> people have this. mentally COVID helped me I think I that, needed a break number one I'm sorry it's like I don't wish it I don't like it I, I wish know. it was gone no, it's true it's but it's true. like I did need a break no, I'm I happy needed you're doing to learn because I have the whole doesn't cry during shootings thing so let's get that's your out. thing Thank well you. I think you pretty much got me with women are annoying and men are <laughs> I think so my I think my mostly female fans are gonna have a heyday with that one <laughs> guys please you have to know me and understand he really loves women but they can be annoying they can what are your non-binary people non-binary well I don't count them yeah, if I ever meet a non-binary person, I'll let you know. <laughs> well, actually, one of my favorite bits in Mexico City that I was doing was when we were at a museum together. I was asking our friends. We went to Mexico City together mm-hmm. for New Year's this year. And I would ask our friends. I'd be like, Meg, has anyone seen Holmes? Where is she? Sorry, they. Sorry. I think that's so funny. <laughs> to mess it up with your friends. Yeah. I mean, I we're living in an industry where no one's ever going to get those things right. And I don't care. Just for the record show, you can use any pronoun. I don't care. I don't yeah. care. Well, that's because you're not actually non-binary. You're using it to get ahead. Thank you. Because yeah. it does help. Like, a lot of people are sort of like, you know, like, oh, we're looking for someone who's, like, gay with a mononym, you know? Like, yeah. a lot of people are really excited about that. People are, people are buying projects. People are that. loving that. <laughs> <laughs> people are really loving that, yeah. No, I've been putting on my kind of girl for some auditions. You've been putting on girl? I've been putting on girl for auditions. I'd put on anything for an audition if the money's I right. I put on anything for an audition. I put on Dom. It, I'm it saying, looks weirder than girl, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Dom would not look right on you. Dom didn't. You, what, well, you think he'd look right on you? You have no idea what I get into. <laughs> you have no idea what I get into. What do you say? You're like, you're like, you're like sit down. Do, am I, have I ever bossed someone around in the bedroom? Absolutely. I'm going to get better at it. I'm going to work on it. I want to be able Like I'm to. disappointed in you. I want to be, I do want to be better at it. Hey, what's something that's so true to you? And try to get this to be a really good one because this is the whole point of the podcast. <laughs> okay. What's so true to me is that I don't talk at all. No. Is that some... You start crying. Yeah. yeah. What's so true to me? You're like, you're, like, you're like, I actually am affected by gun violence. <laughs> <laughs> so, I fucking am, obviously. God damn it. I actually okay. do mourn the victims of gun violence. <laughs> I fucking do. No, it's okay that you don't. No, I fucking... God damn it. I hate that that's... All. Okay. What's so true to me is that some people don't deserve expensive things. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Some people don't deserve expensive things, myself included. And it's like, I want to be like, even if I like make all the money in the world, some people don't deserve them. Do you lose them? Do you not treat them right? You don't deserve them. That's okay. It doesn't mean you don't deserve love, but you don't deserve diamonds. <laughs> you don't deserve boats. I guess I'm not confused on some people not deserving expensive things. What do you think makes people deserving of expensive things? Because mm, I would like, almost say nobody deserves expensive things. No, I think like a Capricorn or like someone who. <laughs> <laughs> I think like, okay, this is something I've been working on a lot is that like being content is boring. That's what Capricorn Tide figured out. I don't like being bored. So my life is messy. I'm working on that, obviously. <laughs> but that means I lose diamonds. <laughs> so Capricorns, boring people, they're not losing diamonds, okay? They're like polishing them and they're like, you know, fit. people who wash their car too much, yeah. they deserve that. 
You know, I don't deserve a new car. I'm not going to tra- take care of her. I'm going to let my car die with me. You know, yeah. she's going to be till the end. My car, like she is, she looks like she's been through it. Cause you she and has. her are both going down in a knife attack. It's my longest fucking relationship. I fucking love her to death. I yeah. see all the scars. I'm I'd like, love for you to get a new one. No, if we're not. <laughs> I know. She's not perfect. No, she's not. But she's not. So I think those people, I think boring. That's actually maybe more of that's so true. Boring people deserve expensive things. No, I don't know if I believe that. I believe the first thing. Not everyone deserves expensive things, myself included. Most people who deserve expensive things are boring. It's a squares and rectangle situation. It's hard, right? Yeah. What do you, you do you agree? That, that, that not everybody deserves expensive things. I think I said my piece on it. I think I think nobody deserves expensive things. You think nobody deserves expensive things? There's no, so you can't deserve an expensive thing. There's, okay, hero. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He, he's like he's, he's like some people don't have homes. I'm like I know That's how I feel. You think so? okay? You think no one deserves that? I think it's not something you can deserve. What do you think you do deserve? Nothing. What do I deserve? Everything. No. <laughs> what do you think a, a human person? What do you think they deserve? Uh, dignity, the ability to vote for their elected officials, a place to sleep, uh, food, health care. But you don't feel that way because you're very right wing. <laughs> I'm like I don't think you should be able to vote. No, I think you deserve all those things too but those yeah those are just their basic things you don't think anything bougie etc no one deserves it's not that no one deserves them it's that you, you, you i think you deserve diamonds and stuff well thank you i don't desire them but you're I, one of the few that aren't boring though i'm one of the few interesting people who deserves nice things yes i don't want nice things you love a new car i don't really i don't have a new car but you like like getting cars, or you like looking at. <laughs> You're like literally- reaching, desperately grasping. But you like would get a new car at some point. You like like to search for things that you can buy. I like shopping, but I often end up with like a bargain. Like I don't think like I didn't buy the nicest house I could afford. I don't buy the nicest car I can afford. I don't. I don't think you can deserve nice. I don't think you can deserve expensive things. But I think it's a big one. What's a big one? That's a big take. I love it. That's a big take. But that's not, that's my so true. It's so true that you can't deserve expensive things, which is kind of in your point. Yeah. You don't deserve expensive things. You don't deserve expensive things. Specifically, I don't. That's my point. Yeah. Well, that, we should probably work on that. I don't deserve expensive. No, I deserve a bunch of stuff, but not expensive things. I had to have a lesson after losing the diamonds a second time. (laughs) (laughs) I lost diamonds multiple times. What do you think you deserve the most? Other than a swift kick in the ass. (laughs) Okay, flirting. I think what I deserve the most is... God damn. Peace. (laughs) (laughs) I think peace. I don't see that for you. Yes, I I think I see it in my 30s. You think you'll be peaceful in your 30s? Are you scared to turn 30? Absolutely not. I've been 30 since I was like 15. Yeah. I can't wait to be in See, my yeah, 30s. See, that, that always scares me when people do that thing. Like, everyone always told me I was 30. Because it's like, you know the one I get a lot? 14. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's like, you're giving 14. I'm like, I don't like when you Ooh. say that. <laughs> Stop. Uh, is there anything you want to plug to the to the fans, to the listeners? Hmm. Anything you want to tell them about? Anything you're loving? I really like Vince Staples' new show. I thought it was really, really good. Ugh, plug- he's so hot. I literally have so such hot. a crush on him. I literally left and was like, I have a new crush. I hate to objectify him. I'm sure the show is great. He's the show is so gorgeous. The show made me have a crush. It's so funny. It's so good. But for me, he's funny as fuck. Just he's so funny and so talented. Just follow me on stuff because I do have stuff that I'm working on that I'm putting out in a few months. And so yeah, you know, just follow me. I, I love it. Holmes, Holmes. Follow Holmes. I love you so much. Thanks for doing it. I love you so much. And I'm really. I do hate gun violence. Yeah, you don't have to try and convince them. Let's just end the pod now. <laughs> Get off me. I thought this would be funnier. Like Shut, I thought. Shut up. I thought interviewing Holmes would be funnier, Shut right? Up. <laughs>